Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hello everyone. I am Dr. Inba Tamil, Assistant Professor, Department of Biotechnology, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Today, we shall know about natural resources, our focus on forest resources. First of all, let us know what is environment. Environment is the total sum of all living and non-living things that can interact with each other. And environmental science is the study of concepts about environment. And environment engineering is the application of engineering techniques for the protection and enhancement of quality of environment. Let us know about natural resources. These are the major sources that are useful to humans and are of more value. Under natural resources, we have renewable resources and non-renewable resources. Renewable resources are capable of being regenerated by ecological processes over a period of time. Under this, we have continuous resources and extrinsic resources. Continuous resources, the examples are soil, water, air, wildlife and natural vegetation. Whereas extrinsic, which can be only managed, are human skills, abilities and institutions. Coming to non-renewable resources, these are not capable of being regenerated by ecological processes. Examples, minerals, coal, oil, natural gas. Let us move on to the categories of natural resources, forest resources, water resources, mineral resources, food resources, energy resources and land resources. Now we shall focus on forest resources. Forests cover one third of the world's land surface and they compose the economy and the environment. Out of 33%, only 12% exist today. Later, I will explain to you why the percentage has decreased to this extent. Now, these are the types of forests that exist. Evergreen forests. Here, the rainfall is throughout and the forests are always green. Example, the Silent Valley of Kerala, where you can find more rosewoods. Deciduous forests. Here, the leaves shed after a particular period of growing. Here, we can quote the example of teak. Then, moving on to coniferous forests, mainly about the pine forest, where the leaves are cone-shaped and during the snowfall, actually, they try to minimize the water content and preserve it. Now, let us move on to the benefits of forests. Commercial uses. As we are all in the civilized world, we dwell and depend on the forest for most of our uses, especially for industrial uses, domestic uses, academic uses, wherever we go, whatever we do, we depend on trees. And all these are commercial. Moving on to ecological uses, these uses form the major part and have a major impact on the environment. Production of oxygen, of course, without trees, we cannot inspire because oxygen is important product of photosynthesis. Reducing global warming. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and these trees, they absorb carbon dioxide, thereby they try to minimize global warming. Soil conservation, trees hold the soil tightly and intact so that they try to maintain the soil fertility and conserve the soil. Regulation of hydrological cycle, once again, these trees, they conserve the water and avoid the water wastage. Thereby, they regulate the hydrological cycle also. Pollution moderators, of course, trees, they are the protectors. They absorb all the toxic chemicals and gases. Thereby, they try to moderate the pollution. Wildlife habitat. Trees are the homes of millions of 
vegetation as well as wildlife animals. Therefore, it is homing several species. Apart from these ecological uses, aesthetic value, trees are actually the beautiful standing points where everyone admire it and they try to attract several tourists also. Therefore, they also have the tourist values. Now, let us move on to the negative part, the sad part, depletion of forests. Why we are depending on forests beyond a particular level? All this is because of exploitation and overpopulation. See, whatever we are able to get from the forest, we are not sufficient. Because of increase in population, we need to overexploit the forest and that is what is leading to the decrease in the percentage of forest. Deforestation, very sad part. Development of projects, of course we are getting civilized and moving into urbanization. But on the same hand, what we are trying to do, we are trying to destroy the forest and converting all these areas for developmental projects like the construction of dams and industries. Mining operations, of course, for mining to extract minerals, again, we are moving into the forest and removing the trees. And forests are the raw materials for industries, especially timber extraction. Though it has been proved illegal at times, people are extracting timber, rosewood, sandalwood, all this for commercial purposes. Fuel requirements. Of course, though we have a number of choices, at last we depend only on the wood as a major fuel. And due to again increase in population, the fuel requirement is also increasing. Shifting cultivation, so though we have a variety of forests, we prefer certain species of crops to be planted. Therefore, we try to destroy forests and try to crop our own species of plants where we start shifting cultivation, removing the natural forest resource. Forest fires, of course, these can be natural or sometimes man-made also. People who move on to the forest for recreation, by some accident, they are setting forest fires. And it also happens due to global warming and by natural calamities. Now, what are the ill effects? We have depleted the forest almost. So what are the consequences we are going to face? These are the ill effects. Global warming. When we can find the globe green on one side, as we start uh, removing the forest, you can see how the globe is becoming very dry, hot, warm, and welcoming all diseases and all negative effects. Loss of biodiversity. Of course, our world, our earth is a beautiful place with biodiversity, immense uh, varieties of species. But what has happening, all these are dwelling in forests. Once we start removing the forests, the biodiversity is also getting affected and there is an ecological imbalance. Laws of genetic diversity, again, the genetic variations, different species, all these are dwelling in the forest. So forest is a resourceful place. So once they get depleted, there is a loss of genetic diversity. Soil erosion, as I said, trees are going to hold the soil firmly. Once you start cutting the trees, the soil becomes loose and gets easily eroded, which you see there. Then floods and landslides. So these are the natural calamities. As you destroy the forest, land becomes loose and starts sliding. And also it will welcome the flood because there are no trees to withstand the excess of water. Loss of food grains, again, this is just an effect of soil erosion. Once the soil becomes loose, there may be infertility and the loss of proper yield of crops. Unemployment problems, because lot of people, they depend, especially the tribal people and those who are near the forest area, who have their employment in the forest region, they all become unemployed. So how to conserve forest? It is essential. We should conserve forest. So what are the steps we can take? Reforestation. So here you can see what is reforestation. There is another word called afforestation. 
reforestation what we do here wherever the trees are removed we try to replace that is reforestation so here you can see the complete forest where it is getting depleted due to some fire or manual depletion but later we are trying to replace the forest by replanting trees that is reforestation whereas afforestation is planting of trees where plants were not existing earlier so you try you can try to choose such barren areas and try to start planting trees and establishing forests then we need to check on forest clearance for human settlement agriculture and industrial activities because for this only majority we are dependent on forest and trying to clear that area so always we need to check that we are not spoiling or destroying the natural resource then control over use of wood and grazing by cattle because of course we are depending on wood for various reasons but we should not over exploit so we should have a control over the use and grazing by cattle cattle needs food but forest is not the place always so we need to control that then control over forest fires and forest pests though sometimes it happens naturally we should always monitor and try to bring out some preventive measures role of government this is very essential though as people and public we work for this government has got the major authority and power to implement many actions and bring out them successfully so the role of government is very very essential implementation of forest conservation act this act came into existence in 1980 it got amended and it has been implemented but still we need to follow it throughout education and awareness this is what we need to do from the academic point of view being as a facilitator teacher as well as as being students we should all bring out education and awareness to the public about the resources natural resources which we possess and how to conserve them and avoid all the negative impacts so that's the end before i conclude let me say forests are the lungs of the earth so conserving them is very very essential so planting trees are planting the seeds of hope and peace let us remember that thank you everyone